أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم All perfect praises due to Allah I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and messenger. May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. Continuing with verse 17 and the hour. And we said that the hour is of the unseen and the unseen is knowledge that is only known by Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, as reported by Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, <coughs> said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the keys of the unseen are five. And then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited the saying of Allah, verse 34 of chapter Luqman, إن الله عنده علم الساعة وينزل الغيث ويعلم ما في الأرحام وما تدري نفس ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت which means, indeed Allah alone has knowledge of the hour. He sends down the rain. He knows what is in the wombs. And no soul perceives what it will earn tomorrow. And no soul perceives in what land it will die. Indeed. Allah is knowing and acquainted. That hour, as the verse says, إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ مِيْقَاتَ The day of judgment, the hour, is an appointed time. The word al-fasl in Arabic has different meanings. It means the day of judgment. It means the day of reckoning. It means sorting out or differentiating between people or groups. Shaykh al Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi said that Allah Azza wa Jal on that day, using the last meaning of the word, Allah Azza wa Jal will differentiate between the followers of the truth and the followers of falsehood. He will differentiate between believers and non-believers, and he will differentiate between the people of Jannah and the people of Hellfire. This hour, as we said, with regards to every particular believer, or human being rather, it starts at the moment of death. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that the journey of the hereafter starts with one's death. The companions understood this very clearly. And that's why death was something very terrifying to them. It is reported by At-Tirmidhi and Al-Albani, may Allah have mercy upon him, ruled it as sound, that Uthman ibn Affan, and the one narrating this is Hanif, his servant. 
Uthman ibn Affan, whenever he stood in the graveyard, he would cry so hard to the extent that he would wet his beard. So, people asked him, the mention of Jannah is made and the mention of hell is made, but you don't cry as hard. So why do you cry so hard when the mention of death or when you are next to a grave or a graveyard? He said, because I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the grave is the first station or stage of the stages of the hereafter. And if it was made easy for the deceased, then Everything that comes after that is easy. And if it was difficult, then everything after that is severe and harsh. The Prophet ﷺ said something about this in a different oration. Allah Azza wa Jal in chapter Taha, verse 124, says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed, he will have a depressed life and we will raise him on the day of resurrection blind. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and this is reported by Abu Ya'la and Ibn Hibban and Shaykh al-Albani ruled it to be sound. He said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the believer will be in a green garden in his grave, which will be enlarged and widened a distance of 70 arms length. His grave will be illuminated with a light like that of a full moon in the middle of the month. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, do you know what does this verse refer to? And he recited this. He recited the verse I just recited before this narration. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي And whoever turns away from my remembrance. He said, do you know what does this refer to? What does depressed life refer to? It refers to the punishment in the grave. For disbelievers. He said, I swear by the one in whose hand my soul is, Allah Azza wa Jal will send upon him 99 dragons in the grave. They will rend and slash, injure and bite him until the day of reckoning. That's terrifying. When one sees a small snake, he's terrified. Let alone dragons. 99 in that area. And he's helpless. He cannot do anything about it, but receive punishment. There is nothing to do, but receive punishment. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa always sought refuge in Allah azza wa jal from the punishment of the grave. As Aisha, our mother, the mother of the believers, the pure and purified by Allah from above seven heavens, the daughter of the best, best of the companions, the daughter of Abu Bakr, the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa She said, I've never seen the Prophet 
seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal after his prayer as much as he sought refuge in Allah from the punishment of grave. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, knowing the severity of the punishment in the grave, said, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, reported or narrated by Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, had I not feared that you would refrain from burying your dead, I would have supplicated Allah to enable you to hear the punishment of the grave. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when one of you dies, his designated seat will be made seen to him morning and evening. If he was from the people of Jannah, he will see his seat in Jannah. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us among them. And if he was from the dwellers of hell, he will see his spot in hell. And he will be told, that is your seat. Until Allah Azza wa Jal resurrects people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clarified that the matter is not related to one's strength, one's body, weakness, strength, male, female, color. It has nothing to do with any of that. It has to do with faith. Aisha radiallahu anha, and this is reported by Al-Bazzar, and Sheikh Al-Albani ruled it to be authentic. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, inquired, having heard all of these narrations, all of these texts about the punishment of grief, she feared for herself. She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the Muslim Ummah will be trialed in their graves. And I am so weak. My body is so weak. I wouldn't be able to tolerate that. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal makes people steadfast in this life and in the hereafter. So the matter refers to our faith. The matter refers to how we lived our lives. You lived upon piety, you'll die upon piety, and you will enjoy the life in the grave. And you will be resurrected accordingly as well. And if it is otherwise, then the treatment will be also different in accordance to one's belief and disbelief, strength and weakness of his faith. And let me conclude with this, and we will resume commenting on this ver this narration in the following session wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin